Okay, now I'm going to show you how this works. Um, and the whole thing works on, on um, voltage drop, okay? Um, voltage drop is the amount of energy something in a circuit is using. And the, the, the reality is, is that the only thing that should be using any energy is the um, load component, okay? So switches or connections or wires or pins or sockets or relay contact, anything other than the load component that's dropping voltage is broken. It's very simple, okay? If voltage goes away before it hits the load, or if there's voltage left over coming out of the load, there's a circuit problem, okay? So let me explain how this tool works, and then, um, and, and it's not patented, so if you're out there and you want to steal it and you want to build it, then okay, but I taught you how to do it, so there you go, okay? So the first thing is we got your batteries, right? Okay, got your batteries. Um, and then we have the starter, um, which I'll, you know, draw like a starter, and then whatever. Now, um, let me repeat, the reason I include the starter solenoid in here with my definition of the starter is because the, uh, the problem is going to either be in the solenoid or in the starter if the starter is the problem, all right? Well, yeah, the switch is technically part of the circuit, but I don't pull the starter and leave the solenoid. I pull them as a unit, okay? So these two are combined. So in my opinion, this is one thing. Now, the only thing that should be using energy is the motor inside. This should not. I mean, because that falls under this category. That's a switch. Shouldn't use up any, ener any energy. Okay, but if it's corroded, it will. So we've got that. Now, the other um, things we have here, we have the, the ground path, which is the ground cable. And depending upon your starter type, you know, you may or may not have a ground strap on your starter. Um, and then you've got the positive. Okay, and I'm just going to draw it coming into here because it's going to be easier, so don't give me a hard time. I know it goes back here, but I just I like the rectangle. It's easier to use. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so there's the deal. There, so there's my positive. And yes, if you're wondering, I don't know where my big red marker is. I'm a little disappointed. I think someone borrowed it for some kind of Christmas something or another, and it's gone. Okay. Okay, so we've got a meter here. And let's say we've got a meter here. All right, and this meter would be on volts. And this meter would be on volts. All right, so it, it's, it's really very simple. What's happening here is we are taking a voltage measurement lost a marker. Okay, here we go. We're making a voltage measurement here and here, and this is going to be the battery under load. Okay? All right? And the reason we're doing this is because this is our power supply. Right? Okay. So that's going to be on volts. Volts, volts. Okay. Then this tool is going to take, I'm sorry, this meter would be taking a measurement here and it would be taking a measurement here, but bear with me, okay, just to make the picture pretty. Okay, so it's going to measure there. And this is going to be on volts, okay? All right, now this is very simple. Whatever this battery is producing, 10, 20, 50, 90, 100, 12, 24, I don't care, 2, whatever. Whatever this battery is producing, that number should be here. Because the whole point of wiring is to allow the energy to get from here to here without being lost. Okay, And that's why we choose cable sizes. Cable sizes are based upon load, and then fuses are based upon cable size. All right, So a lot of people undersize cables. Very bad problem. People tend to undersize cables. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Okay, 
So watch what happens. What I really have here is I have four voltage references. I've got the positive of the battery, I've got the negative of the battery, and I've got the positive at the starter, and I've got the negative at the starter. Okay? So what this tool does is really simple. Okay? And the reason I'm telling you this is because you can do this with a double set of voltmeter leads that I've, you know, that I have in my book that a guy at John Deere showed me a drawing of. Okay, but here's the point: the battery gives me two voltages, right? The starter, I get two voltages here. Well, I can subtract these two, subtract these two, but I can also subtract this from this and this from this, and that's what we do. Because if there's a drop in voltage here, it's going to be the battery positive minus the starter positive. And if there's a problem in the cable here, it's going to be the starter negative minus the battery negative. Because the closer we get to the battery is 0, and the closer we get to the battery is 12. And the further away we get, it's less, and the further away it's... Okay, so that's, that's the way this works. Okay, so let me draw this in a slightly different way. Might make a little more sense, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the battery, move the battery here. Battery goes to ground, right? Okay, then we have the starter, and I'm just going to draw it a little simple way here. And it's got this switch in it, so don't, you know, there we go. And just to make it, you know, official, I'll put a little hard-to-see silver box around it like that. Okay, so there's my starter. And then I've got my ground coming off the starter. And then the ground is continued through the chassis, right? Then I've got my positive cable. Okay. So look what we do. We take a voltage here. And we take a voltage here. So what we get is battery voltage. Let me find a new color here. So we get battery voltage, which is just battery voltage. And then we get starter drop, which is the drop in voltage. And then we have the positive cable drop. And then we have the negative cable drop. So I can actually pinpoint where the exact problem is because the battery voltage will be this minus this. So this minus this equals battery voltage. Okay, that should be, I'm going to use even numbers, it should be 12 volts. Well, the same 12 volts should be here, if everything's perfect, and the same 0 volts should be here, so the starter drop should be 12 volts, we hope, in a perfect world. It'll never be that way, but you get my point. Well, if this is 12 and this is 12, then 12 minus 12 equals 0 volt drop in the cable. Perfect world. This 0 volts and this 0 volts are the same, so 0 minus 0 equals 0. So ideally, all the energy being produced by the battery will be used by the starter, and there will be no loss in the positive cable, and there will be no loss in the negative cable. All right. Well, now we're getting somewhere, because watch what happens. What if I see 12 volts here, but I see 10 volts here? But everything's clean in the negative, so I have 0 volts here, and I have 0 volts there. Well, now look what I get. Battery volts, 12 minus 0, 12. Starter drop. 10 minus 0, 10. Should the starter turn normally on 10 volts? Well, maybe. Should it turn normally on 6? No. And any loss is bad. All right, well, the positive cable drop is going to be 12 minus 10. Hmm, 2 volts. Negative cable drop is going to be 0 minus 0 is 0 volts. So now suddenly what we have is we have a problem. And the problem is in the positive cable, and we're losing 2 volts, which, just for the record, 
is not good. That's not good. Okay? So there's no magic to this tool. It's simply taking voltages, which you can get with a voltmeter. It's hard to do because you got to, you know, and have someone turn the key. Well, we don't need to do that here. And then it's taking the voltage drop across the starter, and it's just subtracting those numbers. Okay? And we're coming up with an actual real-time operational decision based upon a very simple concept. Okay? Now this is a great tool for field service. We didn't put a lot of money into a fancy schmancy case. It's, it's not. It's not a fancy case. It's not fancy. If you're a field service, put a damn Ziploc bag around it. Okay? If you need it to be waterproof, put a Ziploc bag around it, whatever, tape it down. It works fine. Okay? But we're trying to keep it inexpensive and we want everybody to be able to have it and not, you know, worry about it. It's not $1,200 like some people want you to spend. Okay, it's a lot less money. Okay, so review. Voltage drop. The only thing that should drop, any voltage should be the load component. In this case, it's the starter. Okay, right? Whatever voltage the battery is providing, the starter should be using. 12, 12, 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 6, 6. Okay. What the tool does is it takes these voltages subtracts them and comes up with a specific answer as to where the problem is, which is uh, what you need to know in order to fix the problem. Now, I'm going to guarantee you that most of the time it's going to be here. Most of the time. Okay. These numbers you need to work out in your head. Okay. It probably would not be a bad idea to take this tool out and test a couple of um, normally functioning trucks. It would be a very good idea. Okay. You may have to disable the start, you know, disable the fuel or prevent it from starting or something, but who knows. Okay, so uh, that's where we are, and that's what it does. And um, let me show you the hands-on part of it, and I think you're going to be very impressed.